Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at a comprehensive problem. We'll be working the first part of the comprehensive problem. It's broken out into these sections. We will be doing the journal entries for a month. We're going to then do the adjusting process, then we'll do the financial statements, and then we'll do the closing process. The type of company is a service company, so we will not be dealing with inventory at this time, and we'll go through the accounting cycle for a service company in this way. We're going to have the data on the left-hand side of each tab. We'll enter that data into the blue areas is where we want to indication of where the data should be implemented. And then we have our trial balance over here and the trial balance will be formatted in order. The green accounts are going to be assets and then we have liabilities. Then we have equity and then we have income and expenses. It's always going to be in that order with it is also reflected up here in the accounting equation. So you can see the green are added up that's the assets and then the liabilities are added to the liabilities and the owner's equity is added up in the blue that is the owner's equity and of course the assets equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity if it's green that means we're doing good if we have a green uh, zero down here that means we're doing good good being that we are in balance why are we in balance well in this trial balance we're representing debits with basically positive numbers or non bracketed numbers and credits with bracketed numbers so we don't have the T account in the trial balance, but we still have the balancing concept in that we can see that the debits minus the credits are zero. Therefore, the debits equal the credits. And by doing this, we can kind of allow ourselves to have less columns in some of the worksheets. So this is a common practice to do many times. So uh, it is good to take a look at and get used to seeing debits and credits in a few different formats. Over here, of course, we will have the debits and credits on a debit column and a credit column, but I will be representing the credits with brackets in the entire worksheet and see how that works. We then have the general ledger over here, and the general ledger is this long, kind of intimidating looking uh, item of ledgers, but it's basically just the backup for the accounts on the trial balance. So we've got the same list of accounts, same order, the assets. Be, and then the liabilities, then the equity. So we've got cash, then accounts receivable, then supplies, then prepaid rent, then prepaid insurance, office equipment, accumulated depreciation, and then we're into the liabilities, accounts payable, salaries payable, unearned fees, and then we're going into the equity, owner's equity draws, and then we're in the income statement revenue, and then all the expenses list out, listed out in this way. So what we're going to do, of course, is post the journal entries here. And we're going to record the journal entries here. Then we will post them to the general ledger. That will automatically post to the trial balance. We're going to do a, a lot of entries, a lot of repetitions. So this will become uh, familiar as we go. First thing I want to do is actually hide some cells. So we're going to learn some Excel as we go through this process as well. And basically I want to put my information into these cells here. And I would like to hide these cells just so they're out of the way and we don't have to see them and deal with them. In order to do that, I'm going to put my cursor right on the F here so you can see the drop down click so the whole column is highlighted. And then I'm holding down the left click and I'm going to drag until I get to column J. I'm letting go of the left click and then I'm going to right click in the selected area and go down to hide. So we'll hide that selected area so that now we can see the journal entries we're going to work in, the space we're going to put it and the trial balance all in one area. All right, so the first uh, date is 5-3, so I'm going to put that in the date area. And it, sees, it says we received cash from clients for advanced payment for services that will be prepared in the future. Record as unearned revenue. So first thing I'll always ask through these, is cash affected? So is cash affected? Because if it is, it's the easiest account that we will get to know because cash is going to be affected more often than most other accounts. In this case, it says, yeah, cash is affected. Cash is right here. It says we received cash, therefore cash must be going up. So the question is, how do we make something go up? Well, the way I'm going to go through this list of questions, and I'm going to go through this list of questions in order to avoid some common pitfalls. So I do suggest going through this kind of list of questions so that you avoid some common mistakes that will happen. And that will be, well, is, this, is cash a debit or credit balance? It's a debit. How do we know? Because it does not have brackets around it, unlike the credits that have brackets around it. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. So this is a debit. We need to do the same thing to it, which would be another debit in this case. So I'm going to copy this by right clicking the cash and copy it. I'm going to put the debit on top. So here's my date. I'm going to put the debit on top. Why? 
just tradition that goes on top debits go on top so i'm going to right click and i'm going to paste it one two three just the values only if i paste it this way then i change the format of the cell i just want to paint the value values now you could just type it in there obviously as well so if you um you know if you just typed in cash that works as well but uh, copy and pasting might be easier as we go later on i'm in the debit column the debit side and we're going to put the four thousand there and I'm just typing the 4,000 and note that I'm not putting a comma or anything. I'm just typing 4,000. I'm in the cell instead of on the cell. And then we got to hit enter or something in order to be off the cell. So I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see that uh, I'm not in the cell. Now I'm on the cell. We're, if we debit something, then we're also going to have to credit something. So I'm going to represent credits on this worksheet with a negative. So I'm going to put a negative 4,000. Now credits don't mean negative, they're not bad, negative not, is not a negative term in this case. <laughs> negative is just how the credits are going to be represented in the worksheets so that we can use Excel in formulas to help us do some calculations. Note when we hit enter now, it's going to change that negative sign to brackets. That's the formatting of the cell that is doing that. The worksheet is formatted to do that. If you want to know where that formatting is, it's, it's in this section here in the formatting section. You can also right click on the uh, item go to format cells and if you go to the number section then uh, you can see the different types of formats and of course we are in this bracketed format rather than having the negative sign all right so now we just need to know what that other account will be and you would think that if we did work that we would record the other side usually being revenue but in this case in this case it says that we have not yet done the work so therefore we haven't yet earned the revenue so the credit is actually going to have to go to a liability account, in this case being unearned revenue. And unearned revenue, we can see right here, has a credit balance represented by the fact that it has brackets around it. We already know that we're going to credit it because we had to debit cash. If we credit a credit balance account, we'll be doing the same thing to it, which will make it go up. So if we credit this account, it will make it go up. That makes sense because uh, unearned revenue represents something that we owe in the future for something that happened in the past. What happened in the past? What happened right now? We got money. What do we owe in the future? Our service. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go over to uh, C6, right click and paste it. One, two, three. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and post this. Now we're going to have to post this to the general ledger over here. So we got to find these two accounts on the general ledger. So here's cash, for example, and we see the debit and the credit side. We see that we debited cash. So I'm going to go over here in cell O. There's O9. And I'm going to say equals. And I do highly recommend putting formulas instead of just typing the number in here. Because if you do, then if you're, there's a mistake, it's a lot easier to go back and find that mistake. So I'm going to say equals. I'm going to point to that 4,000. When we hit enter, the debit's going to go up from 22.1 to enter 26.1. And we'll see we're out of balance here now. We're out of balance here now by 4,000. That 4,000 being the credit here so we're gonna have to find unearned revenue we could make this the whole sheet a little bit smaller here if we went down to the taskbar if we want to see it smaller uh it's about as small as i want to go but if we go down to there we can see a few more of these general ledger accounts in the same screen and so if i go down here to unearned revenue i want to be in the credit side in this case and uh we're not going to put any negative signs over here all we need is an equal sign and then point to this balance in e6 and then if I go back over here, when I hit enter, it's going to go up in the credit direction. So notice it went up. Excel sees it going up in a negative direction, but we see it as going up in a credit direction because we're dealing with debits and credits in this case. That, of course, puts us back in balance. We can see that 6.5 here is also the 6.5 there. We can see that the zero is back in balance here and our equation is back in balance up here as well. So let's go back over here and I'm gonna make this a little bit larger once again and go to the second item, which is gonna be on 5.5. And it says, receive cash from clients for work done in the past and recorded as accounts receivable. So the first question I'm always gonna ask, is cash affected? And, and once again, it says, received cash. Therefore, cash is affected. Then we need to have cash go up because we received it. Therefore, cash must be going up. We ask, how do we make cash go up? Well, cash has a debit balance by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. The way to make something go up is to do the same thing to it, which in this case happens to be another debit. So I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to put my cursor over here in C8, it's C8, and I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste it 1, 2, 3, that's just the values only when we paste it to values only like so. Then we'll put the 3, 1 on top in the debit column. 
And then in the credit column, if there's only two accounts affected, we have to have an equal number of debits and credits. So we're going to put the same negative. I'm going to represent with a negative 3100. And once again, when we hit enter, then it'll put those brackets around. So I'm going to hit enter. And because of the format of the cell, it put bracket around it. Now, if you wanted to change that cell, then you'd have to go in there and double click on it. Or you can go in there and you can go up to the formula bar up here. So this is actually what we typed in the formula bar. This is what has actually been formatted. So if you're inside the cell, just realize that you're inside the cell and it's going to act differently than if you're just on the cell. All right. So then what's going to be the credit? Uh, receive cash from clients for work done in the past. So once again, we might think, well, we did work. We should credit revenue. But the revenue was done in the past and we already received uh, we, we've already done the work and recorded the revenue. Therefore, when we did the work, we recorded the revenue in accounts receivable up here. So this is where the work should uh, be coming out of. This represents money that is owed to us at 3,400. It has now been paid to us. Therefore, this 3,400 needs to go down in this case. And how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. This is a debit making it go down would be necessary to have a credit. We already knew that because we debited cash and so there's the credit. This is the account that we will credit, which will reduce the receivable. Receivable will go down, which is an asset. It's a good thing. People owe us money, but we would rather have the cash. Receivable is going to go down and the better asset of cash will go up. Going to right click, going to copy that, going to go to cell C9, right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values only. Then we're going to go ahead and post that. So I'm going to scroll over to the general ledger. I'm going to go over enough so we see more of the general ledger. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller in the taskbar down here. And then we'll go to the cash here. So we're going to post this cash line to the general ledger to the cash section. And it's on the debit side. So I'm in cell 010, cell 010. And I'm going to just say equals and then point to that 31. And I do recommend using the formulas here and then saying enter cash goes from 26.1 up to 29.2 that puts us out of balance because that 29.2 also carries over to the trial balance now we need to record the other side we're out of balance by the 3001 that's going to go to accounts receivable on the general ledger this is called posting so here's the accounts receivable it's a credit so we're going to go on the credit side we're going to say equals and point out to this 3001 and that 3-4 should go down by the 3-1-2, in this case, 300. That then 300 is back on our trial balance. That's where this number is coming from. Notice you got these handy little tabs up here. You can see, well, that number is coming from there. That's one of the reasons formulas are handy. Uh, if you want to know where these tabs are, they're in the data group. And uh, no, they're in the formulas tab. And then they're in the formatting auditing group. And there are these two icons here. So I like to put those in the quick task bar by right clicking and putting them in to uh, the quick add to the quick toolbar. So there we have that and we're back in balance. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger again down here and take a look at the uh, next transaction, which will be on five nine. So we paid cash for miscellaneous expense. All right. So miscellaneous expense. So the question is, once again, is cash affected? And it is, we paid cash. So in this case, we paid cash. Cash must then be going down in this case. So how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it. Cash is a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. Therefore, the opposite of a debit is a credit. So to make it go down, we're gonna credit cash. I'm gonna right click on cash, copy it. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Why? Because credits just traditionally go on the bottom. We could, um, uh, have an exception to that rule. It doesn't really matter as long as it's in the right column. But, you know, if it's an easy thing for us to uh, have that convention of debits on top, credits on the bottom, we will adhere to it. Uh, if, on the other hand, there's a reason for us not to follow that convention, then I will break with that convention if uh, it makes the journal entry easier to read. So we're going to put the credit represented by a negative 400. And then I'm going to say enter. So now we're off the cell and we see the brackets around it. If we credit something, we're also going to have to have a debit of some kind because every journal entry has to have the same amount of debits and credits. So we're going to have a 400 on top as well in the debit section. So we have the debit and the credit. The only question being, what will that debit be? 
So pay cash for miscellaneous expense. And the credit, the only question being, what will that debit be? So pay cash for miscellaneous expense. So uh, we don't know what miscellaneous expense is. And obviously in real life, we would like to categorize things as much as possible. But uh, to keep this problem simplified, we're gonna limit the amount of expenses. Now, where are the expenses? We have assets, then we have liabilities, then we have equity and we have revenue, and then we have expenses down here. So expenses are at the bottom and uh, we're gonna put miscellaneous expense at the bottom in this case. So here we have miscellaneous expense. Expenses basically are debit balance accounts and they only go up. They're basically only gonna be debited in except for rare cases that we'll get into at a later time. So we're always gonna debit an expense because they always are debit balance accounts and they go up. We knew we are gonna debit it because we credited cash. So let's copy this, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put it in cell C11. So there's C11, you see that one in C11, right click and paste it one, two, three. And there we have that. So now we can go ahead and post this out. So we're gonna post this to the general ledger. This is called posting the general journal to the general ledger. And we're looking for miscellaneous expense. That's gonna be way over here. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller like so. And we're gonna go way over to the end. Miscellaneous expenses way on the end. And it's down here. It's gonna be in the debit. So it's in column AM 21. Now, why is it AM? Because once you get past column Z, then it starts at AA, AB, AC, blah, blah back to AM. So that's how the numbering system is going to work. So we're on AM 21. I'm going to say equals and I'm going to hold down the left arrow. I'm going to hold it down until I just hit the wall over here. And then I'm going to go find that 400 debit. We're recording this 400 for miscellaneous expense in the general ledger for miscellaneous expense. I'm going to hit enter and that puts me back over here. And we went from zero up in the debit direction to 400. And we can see that 400 then on the trial balance. It should record automatically over here. There's the 400 there, put us out of balance. It made net income go down. So this is the first time net income is affected, meaning we have revenue minus expenses. There is no revenue and we only have expenses. Therefore, we have basically a loss in this case of 400. All right, so then the cash uh, is gonna be the other side of that. So cash we know is right here, it's nice and handy. We can see that in cell P11. So we're gonna say equals in P11 and scroll over here to and notice I'm using the arrows now and I'm pointing to the cash credit in cell E12. When we hit enter, because this is a credit and cash is a debit balance account, they're the opposite. Therefore, it goes down from 29.2 to 28.8. All right, so we're gonna go back, see the next transaction. Gonna make this a little bit larger once again. And we are now on uh, I'm going to skip a line on 513. So 513 then says, vendor uh, paid vendor for part of the debt incurred in the prior month recorded as accounts payable. Okay, so we paid the vendor. So once again, is cash affected? That's going to be the question. And in this case, it is. It doesn't say cash this time, but we paid something and I'm assuming we paid it with cash. Now, cash does include checks and whatnot. So checks are part of cash for this problem. So cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. Cash is a debit represented by the fact that it doesn't have brackets. So we're going to credit it because that's the opposite thing to it in order to make it go down. So I'm gonna right click, copy that. Here's the date line. I'm gonna put my cursor under that in cell C15 because the credits go on the bottom. I'm gonna right click, gonna paste it one, two, three, values only. We're going to go in the credit column on the general uh, journal worksheet and put a negative to represent the credit and the amount will be for 500 when we hit enter the format of the cell will change it to have brackets i'm going to if we credit something we're also going to have to debit something so i'm going to be up here in cell c14 and put the 500 in there as well so there's the debit side, there's the credit side. The only thing we don't know at this time is what the credit account will be. And we recorded services provided, but for which cash had, uh, I'm sorry, we're up here, paid vendor for part of debt incurred. So we paid the vendor, but we didn't get anything today. We got something sometime in the past. So we have an IOU basically out there to our vendor. Uh, the account that represents an IOU is a liability. It's called accounts payable. So accounts payable represents the money that we owe to somebody else. In this case, $800, we're paying 500 of it. We see that it has a credit balance. We're paying it off. Therefore, it should go down because we don't owe it anymore. 
We make something go down by doing the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a credit represented by the brackets. We already know that we're going to debit it because we credited cash. That makes sense. That will make it go down because it's the opposite of what it is. We're going to go ahead and copy the accounts payable. Put that on the top of this journal entry. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. All right, so we're going to post this out. So I'm going to scroll over here a little bit so we can see more of our screen. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller like so. And then let's post this out. So we're going to look for accounts payable. So accounts payable is over here. We're going to be in the debit side in this case. So I'm in cell AA9. So AA9, I'm going to say equals. I'm going to take my cursor and point to the 500. And then when we hit enter, the 800 will go down by 500 to the 300. That 300 then will also be over here on the accounts payable. For some reason, it's the same as the receivable. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> but there's the 300 and we are out of balance by 500 now. So now we're going to post the cash side of it. So if we go to the GL in cash and then we go down here to the uh, cell O12. I'm sorry, we're going to go down to P12. We're going to post it as a credit because it's in the credit column. We're going to say equals. And then I'm just going to point to that cash number and it has E15 in it. Then when we hit enter, it will go from 28.8 down to 28.3 because it's a debit balance and we did the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. All right, let's make this a little bit larger once again and keep posting these out. We're going to go down to the next transaction, which happens to be in this case on 5.15. So on 5.15, we have recorded services provided, but for which cash has not yet been received. Okay, so we've seen that before, I believe. So we did, we've recorded services, but cash, well, we haven't done that yet. Anyway, so we did work, but we didn't get money yet. So then the, re the question again is, is cash affected? And in this case, we're going to say no, we, we recorded work, we did work, but we have not yet received the cash. So we did work, we're going to send out the invoice basically saying, hey, we did work, pay us, but we haven't got the cash yet. So what did we get instead? We got kind of an IOU. When we do the work, we say we earned the work, people owe us money. So the asset that we have is a, an asset in this case. It basically means that it's an IOU. We did the work, people owe us money at, as of the time the work is done. And we can see that the uh, IOU account, the account receivable, has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. People owe us more money. So I'm going to go ahead and debit that, do the same thing to it. Just like if we got paid with cash, we're getting paid with an IOU in this case. So I'm going to right click, copy that. I'm going to put that on the top, right click and paste it one, two, three. So that's going to be for the amount of, in this case, seven, five. If we debit something, we will also have to credit something. So I'm going to be over here in column in cell E18, E18. I'm going to put a negative. 7500 and once we hit enter that will put the brackets around it because of the formatting of the cell and now we just need to know what that credit account will be and the credit will be in this case finally revenue we earn the revenue so basically anytime we do work we earn revenue revenue only goes up so whether we get paid cash or not when we do work under an accrual basis we will record an increase in revenue Revenue has a credit balance. So revenue has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another credit. Uh, revenue will always go up for the most part. If we do work, revenue will go up. Net income can go down, but revenue generally just goes up. So I'm going to go ahead and right click that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put our cursor on C18, right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values only. So then we're going to go back over here and we're going to make this a little bit smaller again and see if we can post this out. So we're going to go to the receivables account. So here we have receivables in cell S10. We're posting this receivable in cell S10 under the accounts receivable general ledger. This is called posting to the general ledger. I'm going to say equals, I'm going to point to that 75 and that 300, once we hit enter, will go up to seven eight by the seven five that we have now posted into the account receivable then we're going to go to the revenue that's going to be the blue accounts so i'm going to go over here a little bit further to the blue over here here's the uh the revenue account so i'm in cell af 19 af 19 so remember it goes to z and then goes aaab and whatnot 
We're going to say equals in the cell. I'm going to hold down the left arrow instead of using the mouse this time. I'm just going to hold down the left arrow until I hit the wall. And then I'm going to go to that last entry that I'm in and I'm looking for the revenue. And I'm just going to go to that cell, uh, which is E18. And then go ahead and hit enter and it will make the account go from zero up in the credit direction to 75. Where else will we see that 75? We see it on the trial balance. So there it is on the trial balance right here. And now that's revenue. Revenue went up. So what happened to net income? We can see it right here on our trial balance. The revenue of the 75 minus the expense of the 400 means we have income of 71. Now that 71 is income. It's not a loss, even though it has brackets around it and Excel sees that as a negative number. We see it in terms of debits and credits as the credits are beating the debits. Therefore, we have income of 7,001 in this case as of this time. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit larger once again. We're going to go down to the next item, which happens to be in this case 517, where it says that cash received from clients for revenue earned during this month. All right, so we did work. And in this case, what we're trying to say there is we did work and we got money in the same time period or within the same month. And so uh, we want to record the, the revenue and the cash in this time period at this time. So first question, is cash affected? Yeah, in this case, cash is affected because it says we received cash. Cash is going up, cash is the debit balance. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm gonna right click, gonna copy that, gonna put that on the top. So I'm in cell C20, right click, paste it one two three then we're going to put that in the debit column i'm in this cell here so the amount will be seven one then we need to credit something for seven one because we have to have an equal number of debits and credits with every journal entry so i'm going to put a negative to represent the credit of seven one and when we hit enter that'll put brackets around it you will need to put the the negative sign in this type of excel worksheet in order for the formulas to work in the most efficient way then the only question is what should this account be so uh cash received for, for revenue earned so we earned revenue so why do people pay us cash because we earned revenue we earned it in this time period in this case we can see the revenue account is always going to be in order assets then liabilities then equity then revenue revenue has a credit balance it only goes up how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it as what it is Therefore, we're going to make another credit. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this in C21. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. Note, we already knew we were going to credit it because we debited cash. All right, so then we're going to post this out. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller again so we can see some more of the general ledger. This is the general journal, which we will now post to the general ledger, which will then automatically update the trial balance. All right, so we're going to go over here to cell 013. And we're going to say equals. I'm going to point to the cash number there. And once we hit enter, the 28.3 will go up in the debit direction to uh, 35.4. We are now, of course, out of bounds by the 7.1 until we record the credit. We're out of bounds here. We're out of bounds here. And then we will go over to the revenue. So revenue is way over here. Remember, it's, it's in terms of assets, then liabilities, then equity, and then revenue is down here. Revenue is always going to be a credit, so I'm in the credit column. I'm in cell AF20 in this case. I'm going to hit equals, and this time I'm going to hold down that left arrow again. I'm just going to hold it down, and note the number changes every time I go. That's fine until I find the one that I want, which is that credit of 71. Then I'm going to hit enter, and it takes the revenue account from 75 up to 146 because we did the same thing to it as what it is. We can see that 14.6 on the trial balance as well. What's the effect on net income? Well, net income went up. So now net income is 14.2, which is that 14.6 revenue, what we earned less the miscellaneous expense of 400 at this time. All right, next transaction. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger on the task bar down here. And we're back to 100%. Gonna go down to 520, where we have purchase of supplies on account uh, no cash is paid. So is cash affected? And the, and the answer is no, we purchased it on account. So many times if a book says it says we purchased it on account, we got to kind of know the terminology. Obviously here, we also said that the cash wasn't paid. So you can kind of think of that as we 
purchased it maybe similar to being on a credit card or something like that. We didn't pay cash. We have an IOU in the future. Uh, if you see the terminology of on account, it's probably going to mean I, uh, accounts receivable or accounts payable and like that. We didn't pay cash. We have an IOU in the future. Uh, if you see the terminology of on account, it's probably going to mean I, uh, accounts receivable or accounts payable. And obviously in real life, we would know these things, but uh, when we work a problem, we got to kind of know the terminology and put ourselves in the shoes of the problem and know what those accounts mean. So the uh, cash is not affected. We pay for something other than cash. Now, the account that we're going to use as the IOU that we owe somebody else is called accounts payable. But uh, in this case, I often think it might be easier uh, to think about what we got rather than the IOU because uh, we've been working with assets more than liabilities and if we're trying to see if we should debit or credit a particular account uh, it might be easier to think about the uh, asset side of it so in this case we bought supplies so supplies is up here we can see supplies right there and we can see that it's an asset just like all these other assets cash and receivable and we got more of it therefore it's going to go up how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it that's a debit therefore we're going to debit it in order to make it go up so even though we know that the other half is the payable we might want to think of the asset because we've worked with cash the most and we know which way cash we're going to go so i'm going to right click i'm going to copy that I'm going to put my cursor in c23 right click and paste it one two three and that's going to go up then in cell d23 the amount being this seven five so we're going to credit something by the same amount, uh, 7.5, so I'm going to put a negative of 7.5. We need to have an equal number of debits and credits in each transaction. And now we already know that we're going to credit the accounts payable. And we can now think that through. Does it make sense that we're going to credit the accounts payable? Well, accounts payable is a liability. Liabilities have credit balances represented by the brackets. In order to make it go up, we would do the same thing to it, which would be another credit, which makes sense because we owe more money now after this purchase. So it does make sense that we would credit the liability. I'm going to right click here, going to copy that. I'm going to go down here to cell uh, C24, right click and paste it one, two, three. All right, so now let's post this out. This is called the uh, general, the journal entry that we are going to post to the general ledger. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller like so. And then we're going to look this over and we're going to look for the supplies. By the way, you might be thinking, why is supplies an asset and not an expense? Uh, many people might be expensing their supplies and there's nothing wrong with that but uh, in this case if the supplies were large and material to our decision making then we should put the supplies on as an asset and then count them at the end of the time period and then expense them as we go if on the other hand supplies is immaterial say we bought like a five-year supply of paper clips for like $25 you know we're not even though the paper clips are gonna last a long period of time we are not gonna go through the trouble of counting the paper clips and expensing them as we use the paper clips. We're just going to go ahead and expense them. So uh, the other reason we put supplies up here is because although we're not talking about inventory yet, we can account for supplies in a similar fashion that we will account for inventory. So we'll have an adjusting entry for supplies that will mirror the adjusting entry for inventory, meaning we're going to buy stuff, we're going to compile it. I think of it as like paper being in, a ta in the tax office. We buy a lot of paper and ink, we put that in the corner, then we use it, and we're gonna go ahead and count it, expense it as we use it. All right, so here's the supplies account over here, and it's in S20. So we're gonna go ahead and say equals, and I'm gonna point to that 75 in cell D23, and enter. And that makes the supplies go up to 885. We can see that 885 there as well. We're out of balance by the 75, and now we gotta go to the accounts payable. So accounts payable, we can just barely see it over here. It's not quite the whole thing. So we're over here in AB10. And once again, it goes from V up to AB. And we have a negative 300 in there so far, a credit of 300. We're going to say equals. I'm going to hold down the left arrow till I hit the wall. Go down to the payable of 75 and enter. So what happened? The 300 goes up by 75 to 78. We can also see that 7.8 over here on the trial balance, of course. So there's the 7.8. We can see that we are back in balance down here. We can see that there's no effect on the income statement from that transaction because we have no income or expense accounts that were affected from that transaction. 
All right, let's go down to the next one. Let's make our screen a little bit larger, back to 100% up in the taskbar over here. Let's scroll back to the left, and we are now on 521. 521 says, record services provided, but for which cash has not yet been received. All right, so we did services, but we have not yet received cash. So is cash affected? And no, we, we did service, but we didn't get cash. So what did we get instead? If we did work, we're going to assume we got something. We're assuming we got an IOU called accounts receivable. So if we did work, we're still going to say, yeah, we received something. We received a promise to be paid. And therefore, this is uh, an asset. It's not our favorite asset. It's our second favorite asset because we're, it's going to be converted into cash, hopefully within like 30 days. So it's a debit. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it because people owe us more money. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and debit accounts receivable. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to put that on the top. I'm in cell C26. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. And again, you could type it in there, uh, but I'm just think that the copying and pasting is faster, in my opinion. And then we're going to go over here, and that's going to be eight hundred, eight thousand dollars and we're going to decredit something. Every transaction has to have an equal number of debits and credits. So then over here in E27, I'm going to put a negative 8,000. When we hit enter, we'll see those brackets appear. Then the only question is, what will that credit account be? Why are people going to pay us 8,000? Because we did work. And in doing work, we earned revenue. So revenue is down here. Remember, it's always going to be in order, meaning assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue and expenses. Sometimes people get the assets and revenue a little bit mixed up in terms of they're both kind of like good things. They're both things that we like. Notice we like both sides of this transaction. We like the receivable. We like that people owe us more money. We also like the revenue, which is the income half of it, meaning that means we earned the revenue. So we earned the revenue. We're getting paid in an IOU at this time. That IOU will hopefully be converted to cash at a later time. So notice that the revenue account has a credit balance and we need to make it go up so we're gonna do the same thing which is another credit note that revenue always gets credited so i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it one two three revenue just doesn't normally go down we don't do work and earn negative revenue although we do have expenses that bring net income down all right so then let's post this out i'm gonna make this a little bit smaller let's go down to about 80 on the task bar down here so we can see our general ledger and then we're going to scroll up to accounts receivable and I'm in cell S11, we're gonna say equals, and then point to that 8,000, and we got the 7, 8 going up by 8,000 to 15, 8. We can see that here on the 15, 8 on the trial balance. Then I'm gonna to go to the, to the revenue account. That's gonna be a little over to the right over here. So we have the revenue account down here, and notice it only has credit balances. We don't ever debit revenue for the most part because it just goes up. I'm in cell AF20 in this case, AF20. 20 i'm going to say equals and i'm going to hold down the left arrow again i could use my mouse but i think it's a little bit easier to hold down the arrow until i hit the wall i'm going down to the last journal entry we did and i'm looking for that revenue account that 8,000 revenue and i'm going to say enter and we can see that that goes up so notice they should all be credits here if you see a debit in the revenue account probably went the wrong way it went up from 14.6 to 22.6 and what does that do to our trial balance puts us back in balance down here and our net income goes up uh, to 22.2 being the 22.6 minus that 400 miscellaneous expense and we are very short on expenses right now we're gonna have some expenses most likely coming up as of the end of the month because that's when we pay our bills all right so then we're gonna go down here to uh, five could squeeze one more in here 525 where we have Cash received from clients for revenue earned during this month. Okay, so now we received cash for work we did in the same time period. So therefore, is cash affected? I'm going to say yes, we received it. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. We're going to say, yeah, we received cash and therefore cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be another debit. Right click, copy the cash cow. Scrolling down to C29, right click, paste it, one, two, three. The amount that we received was 4002 So 4002 on the debit side, we're gonna have to credit something for that same amount, being a credit represented by a negative. 4002 when we hit enter, we'll see those brackets appear. So there's the brackets. 
now we're gonna have to say what will that um, account be and we're gonna say we got paid cash because we earned it we earned revenue and we earned it in the same time period in this case in the same month and so we can see our revenue account once again is down here it has a credit balance it only goes up for the most part and it has a credit balance represented by the brackets therefore we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it which is another credit gonna copy that and we already knew that because we debited cash so we can already we already have that credit over here gonna right click I'm gonna paste that to one two three there's our journal entry gonna make this a little bit smaller again back down to 80 on the taskbar let's post this out so here's our cash account gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to the next line it's gonna go up with a debit so I'm in 014 cell 014 equals and point to that 4002 and enter and that makes the cash go up from 35.4 to 39.6. Then we're looking for that revenue account over here. So revenue is over here somewhere. Going to go to revenue. It's a blue account. Notice it's an order. The green accounts are assets. Orange accounts are liabilities. Then equity. Then revenue. Here's revenue. It only has a credit balance. Going to put equals in cell AF22 and uh, hold down the left arrow. Go down to the last transaction. There it is. There's that 4002. Going to say enter. And the revenue goes up once again from 22.6 to 26.8. And what happens to the net income? It goes up to 26.4. So that's the 26.8 minus the 400. And we're running out of room on the journal entries. What we're, what we're going to do at this time is unhide those cells that we hid earlier so that we can uh, work on those cells. So we can see up here we got A, B, C, D, E, K. Uh, and so there's some missing cells in there. So I'm going to unhide the cells between E and K by uh, clicking on the cell E when it has an arrow such as this and then holding down the left click and dragging to the right so I get to cell L letting go and then I'm going to right click on that selected area and unhide so there's that information now we're going to start I'm going to put the date here which is going to be the next transaction on 527 and then I'm going to go ahead and hide these cells. I don't need to see these cells at this time. Now, if there's a problem, I'm going to have to go ahead and unhide it and find it and whatnot. But right now, I just want to hide these cells. So I'm going to put my cursor on. Let's go to column B. And I'm going to click on that and then highlight and hold down to column F. Let go. Then I'm going to right click on the selected area and hide that information. So it's still there. It's still all posted going from A to, to G we didn't delete it uh, but uh, we are now able to see uh, what we want to see only all right so now we're down here on 527 it says cash received from clients for revenue earned in prior month and recorded in accounts receivable all right so is cash affected and it says cash is received so yes cash is affected cash is a debit balance we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so I'm going to right click on that, copy, I'm going to put my cursor in H5, right click and paste it one, two, three. The, the amount that we received on the 27 is 12,000. We're going to credit something for that same 12,000. So I'm in the credit column in J6, negative 12,000. And what are we going to credit? Well, we received cash from clients for revenue earned in the prior month that was recorded in accounts receivable. So why do people pay us money? Because we did work, but we didn't do work this time period. We did it last time period. Therefore, we have already recorded the fact that we are owed the money in the receivable account. So that receivable account now needs to go down and it has a debit balance. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which is a credit, which we already knew because we debited cash. So we're going to credit accounts receivable, reducing that asset because we got the better asset and we're going to increase the, the cash in this case. So, and note that there's no effect on uh, the uh, income statement on net income for this transaction. Copy and paste it one, two, three. And that's because even though we got cash, we recorded the revenue when we earned it. And that was last month. All right. So now we're going to post this out. So we're going to go into the cash account over here in cell O15 and say equals point to that 12,000 up here and when we hit it turned the, the 39.6 will go up to 51.6 then we're gonna look for the receivable that's right over here right next to it and we're gonna I'm, I'm in cell T12 and we're gonna say equals 
and point to that 12,000. This is a debit, that's a credit, that's going to make the account go down. Oop, I think I missed it. I'm going to say equals and point to that 12,000, makes it go down. There it goes. All right, down to 3,008. We also see that 3,008 over here. And we can see that we are back in balance by the green zero, meaning that the debits minus the credits equal zero. And we are good, back in balance, ready to go to next transaction being on 528. All right, so that says we paid employee for salaries incurred. All right, so we paid our employee for uh, a salary that was incurred. So the question is, is cash affected here? So if we go up, we're gonna say, yeah, cash is affected. We pay the employee with cash, a check, but that's gonna be cash in this case. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy cash. I'm gonna go down to H and nine, right click and paste it one, two, three. Also note that we're not talking about payroll taxes or anything right now. We're just, this would be the simplified uh, journal entry for payroll if we didn't have payroll taxes, which we will talk about at a later time. And cash is going to go down by the amount paid being 800. So I'm going to say negative 800 to represent a credit in this worksheet. If we credit something, we're also going to have to debit something. Put the debit on top in cell I8 for 800. Now the only question is, what will that debit be? And if we look at the trial balance, we're looking for something related to payroll. So we see uh, salaries payable here. We see a salaries expense down here. Now, uh, which one are we going to put it into? In this case, it's going to be the expense. When we record the expense for the, the books, for the payroll department, it's generally going to be recorded to an expense. Now, you'll note that there's something in salaries payable right now. And you might be asking, why is there something there? And uh, the, the, the reason for that could be that we had an accrual entry, which we'll talk about later, from the prior period. And I'm going to adjust that. We're going to take a look at that and make those adjustments at the end of the period and discuss that as we go at that time. In terms of the payroll department, oftentimes they will just record the salary expense in the uh, salary expense area and be more actually on a cash basis in that, in that way. So expenses have debit balances, such as this uh, miscellaneous expense represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. Expenses generally only go up, and we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another ex uh, debit. So I'm going to right click and paste it one, two, three. All right, there's our transaction debit, the salaries expense, credit cash. We're going to go ahead and post that out. So I'm going to look for salaries expense first. That's going to be in the expense area. It's going to be a blue account over here. So the assets are here first and they're green and then the liabilities are orange and then the equity and then the revenue and then there's expense accounts and here's salaries expense way over here in AI, AI nine. So it's an AI nine way over here. And notice that again, it goes to Z and it keeps on going out. It can be a little confusing to, to go through these screens. There's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate Excel to work with screens that are larger than uh, the screen we're looking at. You can manipulate the size. Uh, you can also freeze the panes and whatnot, uh, whatever works for you. But in this cell, I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to hold down the left arrow until I hit the wall. I'm going to go all the way until I hit the wall. And then I'm looking for that 800 related to salaries, which is in cell I8 and enter. And notice you could go over here if you're following the video, you could just type in equals uh, I8. But I find that uh, it, it's a lot nicer to go point to it because then you physically are pointing to it and seeing what is going in that cell. All right, so I'm going to scroll back over here. Now, of course, we were out of bounds by the 800. The other side being cash. We're out of bounds by the 800 here and here. And cash is going to be over here in P16. So P16 in the cash, we're posting the general journal to the general ledger equals, we're going to point to that 800 now. And the 51.6 is going to go down by 800 to the 58. And we can see we're back in balance here, which is good. Green zero is good because that means the debits minus the credits equal zero. So the debits equal the credits. And what happened to net income? Well, it went down by the 800. So we have the 26.8 now minus the eight minus the four. Note also, if you're using Excel and you highlight a certain set of numbers, it will generally calculate that for you in the formula bar. So there's the 25, six, here's the 25, six. So that's a handy little thing to have as well. We're gonna go down to the next transaction, which is going to be on 530. 530, we pay cash for miscellaneous expense. 
So once again, miscellaneous expense, probably not a great <laughs> expense to have, but we're going to keep the expenses a little bit smaller here uh, so that uh, to keep this problem a little bit more simplified. The expenses will probably have more expenses than any other type of account for most companies. But note that they all act the same way. It's just a matter of how do we want to group the expenses. If we have a lot of little things that we pay for that are not significant, we may put them in accounts such as miscellaneous expense. Other types of accounts similar to miscellaneous expense are like office expense, office supplies. Those are types of things that sometimes people put a lot of stuff into, which uh, may not be exactly office supplies, you know. So, but you want to you want to put your expenses in a category system that is one helping you to make decisions but two isn't so cumbersome that it has so many expense accounts that uh, it's not helping you make decisions just cluttering things up so obviously i don't like the expense uh, miscellaneous type of category too much but uh there if there are some small things that are not uh, material to decision making it may be appropriate to put them in the miscellaneous and obviously if someone just went into a small company and drew cash out of the checking account and spent it and didn't keep the receipts and whatnot then we are going to have to you know record it somewhere and miscellaneous expense or office supplies and whatnot is usually where that type of thing will go and so then here is cash affected for this transaction we're going to say that uh, yes cash is a debit balance we're going to make it go down how we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so i'm going to copy that Gonna put our cursor under, so here's the date. I'm gonna put our cursor under that in H12 in this case. Right click and paste it one, two, three. The amount that we're gonna put there, uh, the, uh, all right, so the amount will be a negative uh, 250 in this case for the credit balance. If we're gonna credit something, we're also gonna debit something for that 250. And what will that debit be? And in this case, we already said that the debit will be a miscellaneous expense. So if we take a look at this, remember that the Assets are going to be up here on top, then the liabilities, then the equity, then the income, then the expenses down here. We're down here in miscellaneous expense. We can see that the expenses all have debit balances. They only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click, going to copy this account here, going to put it on top in H11, right click and paste one, two, three. So now we're going to go and post this transaction to the general ledger. So we're looking for the miscellaneous account. We're going to post it to the general ledger, which is over here. And we can see that this is an order. Assets are uh, where we start off with. Cash and asset, receivable and asset, payables and asset, or uh, prepaid insurance. Then accounts payables, a liability. Then equity. And then revenue. And then expenses. And of course, miscellaneous is way on the bottom. Because we're kind of like ashamed of it. So we put it way on the bottom over here. So we got it. Over in AM22, we have this miscellaneous account. So it goes from Z and then remember it goes all the way over to AM22 uh, down here in miscellaneous. We're going to say equals. I'm going to post it this way. I'm going to hit the left arrow, hold it down till I get all the way down here and then scroll up to that 250, which is in I11 and enter. Uh, again, you could just delete it and put in equals I11. Uh, you could put the number in there, but I highly recommend putting the formula in there because it can really help you if you are out of balance so for example in this case we are of course out of balance by the 250 at this time and that's because we haven't recorded the cash side if we didn't know that and we we're trying to figure it out we could try to do something like what if we just deleted the numbers would it be back in balance over here if we used formulas then it may well be so if i say delete then i could say ah well it's something that has to do with that transaction and then if i say undo then our numbers are back we're back out of balance and then we could try to see well which one of these aren't posted and if i put my cursor there and we use our tracer items here not that one but this one then we can say ah that one's posted over there and i can hit this one and say oh that one's not posted that's the problem we didn't post that if we hard code the numbers we won't be able to do that and where are those located again those are in the formulas area in the formula auditing and they're up here in these trace items so it can be really helpful to figure things out if we use the formulas in this uh system when we post them so we're going to post the second half now to the cash so cash is over here we're in the credit side we're in cell p17 going to say equals and then scroll over to that credit of 250 in j12 once we hit enter the 50,008 will go down to 50,550 
puts us back in balance over here. What happened to net income? It went down, so we're calculating revenue minus the 800 minus the 65 is the 25, 350 also showing down here, 25, 350 in the task bar because we are highlighting those areas. That is income, that's not a loss. Credits are actually good on the income statement. All right, next transaction, we're down to the end of the month here. It's gonna be 531, and once again, we paid cash for a miscellaneous expense. So uh, we're paying our bills here, and we're not grouping them very well. I don't think we're putting them in miscellaneous expense, but we're assuming that they're immaterial, and therefore we're grouping them into one area here. And therefore, it's gonna be a similar transaction. We paid cash. Cash is a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the same thing to it, by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna copy the cash, gonna put it under the date. So here's the date, gonna put it under the date in H15. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then we're gonna go into the credit column, the credit amount being in this case a negative to represent the credit, 300, and enter, that puts the brackets around it. If we credit something, we also need the debit, and the debit generally goes on top, so that will be 300 in cell I14. The only question is, what will that debit be? Once again, we bought, we bought something with a miscellaneous expense. So <laughs> we got assets and then we got liabilities, equity, income, missile, and then expenses. All expenses have debit balances. They generally only go up. And how do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we're going to debit the miscellaneous expense, which we already knew because we credited cash, right clicking, pasting, one, two, three, values only. Now we can post this out in a similar way. Once again, this is a general uh, journal. We're going to post that to the general ledger. We're going to post miscellaneous expense. The general ledger is in order by account. We have assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity in the brighter yellow or blue, <laughs> and then revenue and expenses in the less bright blue. And we're down here way in the bottom in cell AM23 in miscellaneous expense equals. I'm going to hold down the left arrow until I hit the wall. And then scroll up to the miscellaneous expense, 300 in I-14 and enter. We should see that 300 po post up here. We should see the 650 go up in the debit direction to 950. We'll also see that 950 over here on the trial balance because it pulls over. We are now out of balance by the 300 until we post the cash side of the entry. So we're going to go to cash uh, general ledger over here in P18, say equals and then scroll over to the cash, which is the credit. And we see the debit balance here is gonna go down because we're doing the opposite thing to it too. 50,250. That puts us back in balance and we know that net income went down by that 302. In this case, 2550 calculated as the revenue less the expenses. Revenue is winning, which is good by 2550. All right, next transaction on 331 again. We have uh, cash from clients for work done in this month. So we had we did work this month and we got the cash this month All right, so is cash affected? Yeah, we did work and we got cash. So cash has a debit balance We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it Which in this case would be another debit. So I'm gonna right click on that gonna copy that gonna put that on top on cell H17 right click and paste it one two three So the amount that we got in this case is three thousand so we're going to credit 3,000 as well, negative 3,000 and enter. What will that account be? Well, uh, we earned revenue. That's why people are going to pay us cash because we earned it and we earned it in this time period. So we did the work this time period. We can see that we have assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue. And so revenue has a credit balance. It only goes up. We're going to do the same thing to it in this case, which would be another credit. I'm going to right click and copy. Gonna put that underneath in cell H18, right click and paste it one, two, three. Then we're gonna go ahead and post this out. So we'll go over here to cell 0819, I'm in 019 equals, and scroll over and point to that 3000. The 50,250 will go up by 3000 to 53,250. Now we're out of balance, of course, until we record the second half. Remember, recording the journal <coughs> entry to the general ledger. And where's the revenue account over here? It's in order, assets, and then liabilities, and then equity, and then revenue. So here's revenue. Notice it only has credits because revenue only goes up in the credit direction. And we're in AF23, AF23, 
I'm going to say equals in that cell and then hold down that left arrow till I hit the wall. Looking for that 3000. There it is. And that's the revenue account. We're going to hit enter. And that makes revenue go up from 26.8 to 29.8. And if we scroll back over to the trial balance, we'll see that 29.8 over here as well. What happened to net income? It went up by the 3000 now having 29.8 minus 8 minus 250, giving us 28.50. All right, next transaction. We are still on 531. And we had services provided on account. Cash has not yet been uh, collected. So now this is the work that we did that we didn't get cash in this month for. So therefore we did work and haven't got cash yet. But we are going to assume that we got something. What did we get? We got an IOU. What's the IOU account? Accounts receivable. So we, we, if we did the work, we're going to assume we got something on the accrual basis. We don't do work and not get anything. Uh, we haven't got anything physically yet, but we're going to assume that we got an IOU here for the work that we did. The accounts receivable has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we're going to right click on that, going to copy that, going to bring our cursor down to H20, right click and paste it one, two, three. Then the amount will be 2000. We're going to credit something for the same 2000. So we're going to put a negative 2000 in this case. And uh, then the question is, why are people going to pay us money? Because we earned revenue. So it's assets on top, then liabilities, then equity, then revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So I'm going to right click on that, going to copy that, going to put that in cell H21, right click and paste it one, two, three. Then we can go ahead and post this out. So this is the general journal that we're going to post to the general ledger. We're looking for the accounts receivable and accounts receivable will be in cell S13. We're going to say equals in cell S13. I'm going to go ahead and point to that 2000 next to the receivable, which should make the receivable go up from 38258. Puts us out of balance by that 2000 until we record the other side. So the other side being revenue. So the general ledger is in order. We got assets over here in green, then uh, liabilities in orange, and then equity, and then revenue. So here's revenue down here. Notice they all have credits because they only go one way. They go up in the credit direction and we are in AF20 in this case. So we're going to say equals in AF20 and hold down that left arrow until we get to the revenue account. There's the 2000. I'm going to say enter and revenue will go up from 29.8 to 31.8. Where will we see that 31.8? Also on the trial balance is where we will see it right there. What happened to net income? It went up by 2002. 318 minus 8 minus 950 equals net income of 30,050. Also shown in the task bar, 30,050 because we are highlighting those cells. Okay, one more transaction on 531 and the owner withdraws money. So if we are the owner, then we're going to say, okay, I'm going to take some money out of the business. The business account is, of course, for business. If I want to go on vacation or whatnot, on the personal side, then I should first take the money out of the business account, put it into my personal account, then go on vacation. So that's that's going to be the plan now. Uh, we're going to pull out the money from the business. So uh, is cash affected? Yeah, for the business, the money is being pulled out. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy the cash. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm going to go to the bottom, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Going to go to, to the column J, credit side, negative 10,000. We're going to debit something. The debit will go on top for the same amount, 10,000. And the only question is, what will that debit be then? And the owner's drawing the money out. So it's going to be down here in the equity section. And the reason I make the equity section uh, highlighted in blue in this case is because that's kind of like the dividing line between the balance sheet, which is up here, and the income statement, which is down here. So here's the equity section. Here's the amount owed to the owner as of the beginning of the time period. And uh, we're going to make that go down. But we're not going to put it to that account directly. We're going to make kind of like a contra equity account just called draws so that we can see directly how much money was taken out by the owner. And uh, that's important when we're a sole proprietor. It becomes more important when we're a partnership because we want to see exactly uh, how much each partner took out during the certain time period. So we're going to say draws is going to be the debit. We already know it's going to be a debit because we credited cash. 
if we think about it why is it a debit because really it's bringing this equity account down it's kind of like a contra equity account that has a credit balance we need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it so we're making a new account which will actually go up in the debit direction but it's really bringing the total equity down so we're going to go ahead and copy that and paste it here in h23 right click paste it one two three and then post that out so that's an equity account so we're posting this general journal entry to the general ledger looking for draws which is an equity account uh general ledgers in order assets and then liabilities then equity so here's draws over here in ae 14 so ae 14 we're going to say equals i'm going to hold down the left arrow we're going to go to this draws of 10,000 and enter and there's the 10,000 we can see the 10,000 here we are now out of balance by the 10,000 until we record the other side to cash which will be over here in cell p20 so we're in p20 and we'll just say equals and left down to cash and when we hit enter the 10 the 53 250 will go down to 53 uh, 43 250 and that will also be on the trial balance over here and we are back in balance uh, so just notice that uh, the trial balance is back in balance if we look at the uh, the accounting equation we can see that assets equal liabilities plus owners equity if we rearrange that also note that it also means that assets minus liabilities will equal equity meaning the equity is the book value and you can see that here too notice that if i highlight the assets uh, adding this adding this adding this i'm up to 77 uh, one if you keep watching that number it's going to now go down by the 330 to the 76 uh, 770 then down to 68 970 and so on till it gets to uh, 62 350 that 62 350 has to be the same as these blue numbers here so the reason all these numbers are blue even though we have the revenue the expenses is because really they're all part of equity notice they're all part of this number and that has to make sense because the top half represents uh, what we have minus who we owe it to the bottom half represents what is owed to the owner or what the book value of the company is worth but it's currently broken out between basically the beginning balance and or investments and what was taken out and all of the what was earned through that time period so if we highlight this second half we also come out to this 62,350, which we have up here, 62,350. So uh, keep that in mind. You, you can look at this trial balance uh, and spend some time looking at the trial balance and highlighting different things and seeing how this ties out to the accounting equation.